Okay, in today's video, as you can see, I'm going to go over an explanation of gravitational potential energy, and we're going to be talking mostly about this equation, and this is the more general form of the equation we use for gravitational potential energy. It says here that the gravitational potential energy is equal to minus g, the gravitational constant, times m1, the mass of one object, times m2, the mass of the other object, divided by the distance between them. And in this video, I'm going to be trying to go over why we have this negative sign here, why this is negative, and how we kind of use that mathematically. This equation is the more general form of the equation we use to calculate gravitational potential energy, but we also probably you have seen this equation. This is the more specific equation we use to calculate gravitational potential energy. This equation says that the gravitational potential energy is equal to the mass of the object times g, the acceleration due to gravity, which at the Earth's surface is 9.81 meters per second squared, times h, the height to which the object is moved. This equation we use near the Earth's surface when the g is going to be a constant. This equation is more general. This equation we use when we're talking about moving an object a great distance away from the Earth's surface, like when we launch a rocket or launch a satellite, or when we move a satellite from one orbit to another, we can calculate how much work or how much potential energy that satellite would have. These two equations are really the same equation. This is a more specific form of this equation. If I calculate my gravitational potential energy at the Earth's surface with this equation or this equation, if I do it the right way, then I'll get the exact same answer, okay? But the difference between those two equations is that for this equation, this more specific form, we generally define zero gravitational potential energy to be at the Earth's surface or at the bottom or where the object starts. For this equation, which is a more general form, we kind of do the opposite. We define the gravitational potential energy as zero when we're infinitely away, infinitely far away from the Earth. When you're infinitely far away from the Earth, then the object feels no more gravitational attraction and therefore has no more gravitational potential energy. And that is why this negative sign is here. And I'm going to go through kind of an example using this equation and then try to relate that to this equation so that you can see the difference in the two. But they kind of, they both work out the same. I shouldn't say kind of, they both work out the same way. So let's, they both give the same general kind of results. Okay, so when we have this equation, the change in the potential energy is equal to the mass of the object times g, the acceleration due to gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared, times the height to which the object is moved. Now I said, when we use this equation, we define the height at zero, or the potential energy at zero at the bottom. So here we have the object at the bottom, it's sitting on the floor. We're gonna raise it up 0.85 meters to this table. When it's at the floor, the height is zero, and therefore the potential energy is zero. If I move it up 0.85 meters, that's a positive change in the height, and that gives us a positive change of potential energy. If I move it back down, then that's a negative change in the height and a negative change in the potential energy. Okay, so the general idea is when you move something away from the Earth's surface, you move something up, you increase its potential energy, when you move something back down, you decrease its potential energy. And I hope to show you how we get that same kind of result when we use this equation, we're calculating the potential energy. This is the more general form, as I said. Now, this is the Earth. Okay, these, oftentimes you see this diagram or this chart, this diagram, this graph really help, relates the distance and the potential energy. Okay, it's a little confusing. You see it in different forms, but I drew it like this. This is the Earth. This is the potential energy on, <clears throat> excuse me, the y-axis. Here's zero. All the values down here are negative. When you move down this graph, you get more negative, and therefore the values for the potential energy are less. This is, on the x-axis, we have the distance r, the distance away from the object. Okay, so this is the distance, this is the potential energy, these are positive distances, and these are negative potential energies. This is the graph of the potential energy, this purple curve, and you can see here that as the distance gets less, as the distance decreases, then the potential energy also decreases. This is decreasing because these are decreasing values. These are more negative values. Okay? And I'll show you that in just a moment. Now, we have this very important point right here. Okay, this point, R, at this point here, we say that we're infinitely far away from the Earth. Okay, this is infinitely far away. And when we're infinitely far away, as I showed you in the previous slide, that is where we define the potential energy to be zero. When we're infinitely far away from the Earth, 
the object feels no more gravitational influence from the Earth, and therefore the potential energy between that object and the Earth is zero. Okay? Now, we're going to look at a couple other points and see how the results are the same qualitatively increasing and decreasing potential energy as we move away and towards Earth. As long as we remember this negative sign, calculate the changes properly, and pay attention to our negative signs. Okay, so here we have R1. We're just gonna say this distance. I don't know what this distance is. It's less than infinity, it's this distance away, and that corresponds to this potential energy, which I said PE1. Potential energy one, radius one. And we're just gonna say that this potential energy is minus 100 joules. Minus because it's below the zero. This is negative. So in this case, we have this negative sign. If I calculate the potential energy, I get a negative value. We just say this is negative 100. Now we're going to move closer. Okay, we have here R2. We move some distance closer, and that has a corresponding potential energy at that point, PE2, and that's more negative. Okay, that's more negative, so now we're going to say that at PE2, the potential energy is minus 400. And you should notice that this number is smaller than this number. Okay, the 400 is bigger than 100, but minus 400 is smaller than minus 100. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the change in the potential energy. And the change in the potential energy is always the final potential energy minus the initial. And we're going to do that from when we move from point 1 to point 2, from R1 to R2. So R2 is the final, and R1 is the initial, so we have PE2 minus PE1. All right, and we're going to plug those values in, and you can see we have PE2 is minus 400, so we have minus 400 minus a negative 100. Now you got to be careful with the negative sign. You have a negative sign here, a negative sign here, or a minus sign, and a negative sign here. Minus a minus is a plus. So that means when we move from R1 to R2, from PE1 to PE2, as we move down towards the Earth's surface, just like in the previous example, the change in the potential energy is minus 300. That means the potential energy is decreasing by 300 joules, just like we had when we moved the object from the table back down to the Earth's surface. Okay, you have to be careful with the negative signs and use the negative signs properly. Remember, change is always final minus initial. Now we're going to do the same thing for when we move the object from 2 to 1. And when we move away from the Earth's surface, you should see that once again the potential energy is going to increase. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, now we have PE2 to PE1. We're moving from 2 to 1 from this distance to this distance, from this potential energy to this potential energy, and PE2 is the initial and the final, so PE1 is final. Make sure you keep your final and your initials straight. And PE1 was minus 100, negative 100, and then minus a negative 400. Once again, minus a minus is a plus. So we get, in this case, that it's minus 100 plus 400, and that's plus 300 joules. So you can see when we move from 2 to 1, when we move away from the Earth's surface in this case, just like we did in the previous slide, we have an increasing potential energy. Okay? So that was really the main thing I want to show you. I want to show you that qualitative uh, explanation about how those two equations are the same and how in both cases, when you move away from the Earth's surface, the potential energy increases. When you move back, the potential energy decreases. Now, I just made the summary slide. The PE in this more specific form, we use this at or near the Earth's surface because G is constant. But still, increasing height is increasing potential energy, decreasing height is decreasing potential energy. And really the difference, the main difference I think of for those two equations is that the potential energy is zero at the Earth's surface when we use this equation. For this equation, we use when we have large changes in height above the Earth's surface, launching a rocket, launching a satellite, moving a satellite from one orbit to another. And we use this equation because G is not constant. But still, just like up here, increasing height, increasing potential energy. Decreasing height, decreasing potential energy. Remember, the change is the final minus the initial, and don't forget this negative sign. Okay, and the, like I said, the main difference between these two equations, and for this equation, the potential energy is zero at a height that's at infinity above the Earth's surface. Okay, so there you go. I hope you found that explanation helpful. Hope that kind of straightened out a little bit about this negative sign, how we use the negative sign. In the following videos, we'll do some more quantitative examples. 
You can link to those in the upper right hand corner of this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you found it helpful, please do all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section. Comment section. And don't forget to share this video because sharing is caring. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.